All right. Uh, Bryce, do you want to talk into your mic? Sure thing. Uh, also, so since this is the only form of audio, uh-huh. you really have to talk into it, which is really weird because like whenever you look at like another camera, you have to like move around it. Oh, okay. Because otherwise, if you're like over here. So is know, this too far away? Or? It's probably, you can probably move it closer. Move it as though you were talking to Amanda. But Oh, boy. <laughs> I'd, I'd... All right. It wouldn't be me backing away. She'd yeah. be backing away. You're yep. close. Uh, so we're good, Joe? Okay, good. go ahead and hit the recordy thing. Okay, how long have we been recording? Oh, a minute? So we have like all that other stuff? Don't worry, it's totally staying in. <laughs> so, all right, everybody. Welcome to another episode of uh, this CCH random podcast that Lance has lovingly allowed me to continue to do. So I uh, really appreciate that. Um, today we've got, uh, somebody who you probably all saw tonight cause we recorded this immediately after the well, cause Bryce is incredibly busy, but, uh, we've got Bryce Wordman. Bryce is, uh, as I wrote down earlier, it says he's the current director at the Windward Island School of Evangelism, AKA Wise, currently located on the Island of Barbados. He's also a fantastic guy with a fantastic family, questionable taste in sports teams, and a good sense of humor. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, uh, why should a person be a Cardinals fan and, because they win a lot is not a uh, acceptable answer. <laughs> well, you took away the best answer. I mean, why? Why not? Hey, why I mean, you... I haven't checked so far, but last time I looked, the Royals were only one game away from having, like, we were one game less in terms of number of wins as the Cardinals. In a sixty win, in a sixty game season. Well, you also had COVID for a while, so. Well, we had. That's games. right. We were out for a long time. <laughs> yeah, but all right. Why? Why should somebody be a Cardinals fan? <laughs> They've got great colors. They have great tradition. They have the best stadium. I mean, what, I, I, it, it's hard to imagine a a world without without the St. Louis Cardinals. Who who it, is it, like the great greatest St. Louis Cardinal in well, your opinion? Stan the man. It, it starts with Stan, and then you you go down to Dizzy and Bob Gibson and Brock and. Shane Deese and uh, Flood, and hey, you just got great players. You got great managers. It, very rich in tradition, which is which is which is fun. Yeah, yeah, and which makes it fun. I'm I'm a Royals fan, which can be tough, but you can you could never say a Cardinals fan base is not passionate. True, like. I mean, sometimes people use it sarcastically, like the, the you know the best fans in baseball kind of thing. But at the same time, like legitimately, like Cardinals fans, rain or shine, like they are the most passionate fans that you're going to find in pretty much. Yes, the league. and and the thing that I love about being around, like what what Cardinals fans that I that I appreciate, they love the game, and so they will applaud, and they know it too, and they like, know it, yeah. And so even if if the other team makes an incredible play. The Cardinals fans will, will applaud it, you know, and, uh, you know, a lot of fans, they, they just won't do that. Mm-hmm. Even if it means you got our guy out or whatever, the, they appreciate good baseball. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's, that's, that's just a unique thing. I, I think it's pretty neat. All right. Cool, cool. All right. So what is wise? Wise uh, is, is a Bible college. I mean, what we do is, in a Caribbean context is take students that are interested in ministry, interested in God's word. um, And we want to, we want to make them Christian leaders. And, and so we do that in a practical way uh, with our work study program. Uh, We do that uh, also inside the classroom with, you know, Bible courses, but then also uh, with practical courses that we offer as well uh, to give them a good, you know, well-rounded approach of, of what it looks like uh, to serve in ministry and in church leadership. Uh, but even in a bigger sense than that, it's not just in the in a church context. We want them to be good fathers, mothers, you know, um, you know, employees, employers, whatever. And uh, whether they're in a ministry, quote unquote, ministry, full time ministry context, or they're in a secular context, uh, you know, faithfulness is called of all who follow Christ. So we want to uh, give them opportunities to be able to experience that and participate in that. And so that's that's who we are. And so we take students from all around the Caribbean and we're branching outside the Caribbean. In fact, we have a student coming in even this year. 
um, that's uh, from Nigeria. Oh wow! And um, and uh, so you know we're excited about how God has opened the doors for um, even other places you know outside the Caribbean. So uh, that's that's pretty neat. And so yeah, so and Wise has been around for over forty one years, and and that's that's a long time for missions and. Uh, and that's that's a a, a good testimony of, of the faithfulness of the school. Uh, so, like, why the why the islands of the Caribbean? Why not, you know, New Guinea or Canada or downtown Columbia? Why why the islands? Why is this mission specifically here? Well, it's got great weather. Oh yeah, that's good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know, hey, I, I I've often talked on uh, mission trips. Like, I mean. <laughs> You're going to a tropical island. Some people are like, oh, yeah, going to a tropical island in December. I bet you work hard, which we do work hard. Like, I've broken sure. rock in the middle of a sweltering sun, but at least whenever I look up, I'm like, ah, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Also, Joe is uh, somewhere in the background. You probably couldn't hear him, but he's doing switching, and we appreciate that. So, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, why, why the islands? <laughs> well, um, you know, we, we, we partnered with, with a vision that you know was in place before us and uh, with bob and jackie muter and and the robertson family that you know they had a they had a passion for the churches in the islands where they were serving in jamaica at the time mm-hmm. and what they had come to find due to political unrest that was happening at that time in the 70s and some of the situation at the at hand they felt that the best way to reach the churches was to start a school that would be able to train next wave of, of leaders of, of very important uh, biblical principles. And instead of trying to just deal with the workers and the leaders at hand at that point and said, how can we do this? And that's kind of where wise came about. Okay. Um, so, I brought some brought some goodies that I kept over in a box over here. Ooh, food. <clears throat> They're mostly just examples of things that are like Barbados. <laughs> um, oh. That is from the 50 year anniversary. Whenever we first came, our first year. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah was a- it was like a crazy party. Like their president was like on a boat, and there were dr- drones everywhere. It was like half the island was <laughs> one. In uh, Bridgetown. Um, <laughs> so that was pretty crazy. Yeah. And this is uh, the Barbados flag, which you will now, you will now recognize. Amazon? Uh, Lance got this for me, actually. So <laughs> I thought that was funny. But also, I have a uh, Haitian. Haitian flag. Yeah. Uh, which uh, you were in Haiti at one point as a missionary, right? Uh huh. Cool. So, how did you get into missions? <laughs> um, you know, we it really is is was just a calling. Um, was something that that God had laid on on my heart, on my wife's heart. Uh, you know, when we got married, and and uh, you know, and I feel that that's what's most important. It's not just something like a, a career to pursue, even though that can work. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I think that it's it's critical, you know, for, for a lot of reasons, um, you know, for it to be a calling. And so that, uh, you know, I had exposure from short-term trips and different things of, of missions, but, um, but when I was in college and, and, and that, uh, it, was, it, was, it was a calling and... and and felt that this is where God was leading our family, and so that's how we got into it, if you, if if you will, and and um, and started in Haiti. Yeah. And then how'd you end up at Wise? <laughs> um, we you know we had a still had we had a heart for the Caribbean <clears throat> and the work happening there, but things uh, opportunities were changing in in Haiti, and and so there was a, a kind of seemed like out of the blue, um, uh, individuals who were, who were contacting us about an opportunity to serve at WISE. And so we were kind of at a transition place mm-hmm. um, of do we, do we stay on the mission field? Uh, do we stay in Haiti? Do we st- stay in the Caribbean context? Do we go back to the States? What do we do? And, um, and you know, and so we just prayed and, 
and felt that that wise was um still using a lot of the the gifts that we felt god had given us um even though it was in a very different way uh but felt that you know i love to teach and i love to be in the classroom and and we love the work of of training up future leaders and and so you know we'd still be able to continue to do that um in in that setting and and so uh, and, and still be in the caribbean so we we decided you know that would be a good fit mm-hmm. all right uh so most of my advertisements are fairly cheesy like leroy's beard uh last one was legitimate and that uh proclaim which is still going on i believe next thursday is whenever they're gonna have like their normal stuff um but uh, this episode of the podcast is brought to you by uh, the Barbados Mission Trip by CCH. <laughs> uh, I think this is like our seventh trip. How long have you guys been in Barbados? Uh, okay, seventh is... in Barbados. We went to St. Vincent before that. Um, True. Where it was the same college move transition. This um, is this is our tenth our tenth year. Tenth year in Barbados. Tenth year with Wise. This will be sixth year in Barbados. Okay, so. I think about twice the first year, but um, yeah. So if you're interested in that, there will be some information somewhere on the screen uh, about how to get connected with that because uh, we're probably going to do uh, more than just one trip this year. Um, so this episode of the prod- podcast brought to you by uh, Barbados Mission Trip. All right, Bryce, uh, on a scale from one to 10, how likely is CCH to burn down the Wise campus on a mission trip? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a one uh, or a zero. Yeah, to be honest, CCH has always been one of our favorite teams. But did we not yeah. set a forest on fire our first year? Well, that's true. <laughs> but that was fun, though. It there was, was, you know, there was some was, enjoyment. It was in definitely it. interesting. Like, <laughs> five, okay. What was your perspective of what went down with that? And then I'll give my perspective. Uh, it all happened. It all happened so fast. But it it, it is a simple thing of. You know, to me, where it's like, we think the fire's out, but we were all leaving and going to Codrington. And, mm-hmm. and so it was, it was like, yeah, it should be good. Mm-hmm. And termite nests are a pickle. Yeah. And uh, so, it, you know, it flared back up and yep. spread. And... Yeah. So my, my perspective of what happened. So at the college, this is like the first year that Wise has been, uh, like been on the island uh trash isn't really being picked up at this point right so you guys are burning all your trash to get rid of it and they got a they got a burn pile and then there's a garbage pile right next to it so that there's some level of control and before we left to this beautiful college called codrington college to go play uh, a a wiffle ball game because you know that's respectable for a multi-hundred year old mm, sure. school go play with some baseball uh so whenever before we left we put some of the ashes uh they got into the actual garbage pile and then just all that went up while we were at the at the college right like Mm -hmm. that's that's how i remember it so you get a phone call from amanda saying hey the force is on fire yeah and you speed off meanwhile i'm sitting in the back of a truck uh because they have a truck and you know it's you know open air and nice and we thought it would be fun so bryce speeds off and then our driver gets lost and loses you and then there's this torrential downpour that happens so we're in the back of the truck and it's just raining everywhere and he pulls down one road and it's wrong so he starts backing up and we're getting drenched we're like why is he backing up <laughs> so eventually we pull up to the school and like we're just drenched we there was a kind of a fun event that you guys were hosting for us uh, just some like cookies and cupcakes at your guys's place just to kind of hang out with you guys so we were looking forward to that take a shower just relax for uh, a little bit and then we pull up and they're like hey, uh, the garbage pit caught on fire. We need help putting it out. So we run over there. There's people with buckets putting stuff out. And at that point, it was pretty under control. The, uh, it was a godsend that the uh, the rain came in and just kind of yes. knocked it all down. But we're in there. And then I remember uh, your flashlight on your phone you gave to me because I was small and like climbing under stuff. <laughs> and I had it in my mouth. <laughs> and I don't oh, know gross. if you were super satisfied with that <laughs> back. But uh, yeah, it was just a termite mound that just got caught on fire and it was drenched on top but underneath there was just more heat coming through it so definitely uh definitely a fun event and then the next year uh a similar thing almost happened but we got put it out super fast because <laughs> we knew what to do so good times good times that's right but uh yeah so with all that being said um 
What's like the weirdest experience you've had on mission? Uh, probably, probably one of the most, um, yeah, there's been a lot of odd, anytime you're in a, in a, in a culture that's not your own, mm -hmm. there's a lot, there's always things almost, yeah, I'm not going to say daily, but where you're going, what in the world, um, <laughs> that's different or, or whatever, but probably one of the more, um, difficult moments uh that we've had was um that wasn't personal mm -hmm. um there, there's been some some personal things but um was was when the earthquake and, and when we lived in haiti oh yeah um, and you know that was not because you know we were in the middle of port-au-prince which we weren't uh but just the whole experience you know um collectively was 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 just very surreal um mm -hmm. and you know just how the what the haitians were you know responding to everything what your responsibilities became um the death you know and and mm -hmm. then when i eventually got to port-au-prince and was trying to to help a friend who lived there and was was doing different work there um I've just never seen anything like it. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, the, that that was probably one of the most bizarre, you know. Just like surreal, like what's going on. Yeah, like, it was just like, I can't, I feel like I'm in the middle of a war, you mm -hmm. know. Or, uh, it was it was very weird, yeah. <laughs> um, So, as someone who's been on mission for, you know, how many years is now? Uh, this will be 15. Wow, 15 years. Uh, as somebody who's been on mission for that long, uh, obviously we've had CCH out to the college to help out on more short-term mission trips. Uh, what, in your opinion, is the difference between a an effective short-term mission versus maybe a mission that is short-term that is maybe not as effective for kingdom work? Yeah, that's a good question. In my opinion, the the thing that makes all the difference is leadership. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the reasons why we love CCH coming is because in my opinion, uh, um, Lance does a phenomenal job, uh, of preparing the minds and the hearts of, of the CCH students when they come and that we're here to serve, um, you know, it's not about us. And, and you see that, mm -hmm. you see something, that. something Lance has mentioned before, cause Lance actually taught you in youth group, right? Um, it was, uh, yeah. Um, he wasn't here for very long and I was pretty young. Yeah. But I mean like, but that's, yeah. that's the, I mean, there's, there's an age difference there. Yeah. Lance is old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, his, everything that he's often told us whenever we go on mission, he's like, Hey, this guy is, I'm old enough and this guy's young enough that I taught him at one point, but anything he tells me to do, I'm going to do it mm. regardless of age or whatever, because we're there to support you guys. Yeah. We're there to help that mission. So yeah, sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah, that's, and yeah. I, and to me, I mean, I mean, of course it matters the personalities and the maturity of, of people who come, but, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's, it's, it comes down to leadership mm -hmm. and those the teams that come down that have poor leadership ends up being a, a more challenging week um, for everybody mm -hmm. and less productive or, or they, and they, and even in, from a spiritual standpoint, um, oftentimes, you know, are not as receptive to what the spirit is doing mm -hmm. uh, in the group that week, but the teams that are led well and are more intentional with their time and, uh, you know, know why they're there and are more purpose driven. Um, those, those are the teams that get a lot out of the week and God uses it in extraordinary ways for everybody involved, for those who are the recipients, you know, uh, as well as those who are coming and, and, and giving. And so, um, to me, it's all about the, it's all about the leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to steal a question that Tyler Hensley, I was talking to him about talking to you earlier <clears> today, <throat> and he asked every mission missionary that he goes and takes a trip with, he asked him the same question. You probably remember it because I imagine he's asked you it. <laughs> would it have been better for us to write you a check and raise all the money, um, uh, that it would cost to go to Barbados, 
uh, would it have been better to just write a check and send it to you or actually go and do the mission, like speaking from CCH? Sure. No, it's always better to come. Um, I've, I've, I've had, there are missionaries that believe that Mm -hmm. and and I respect that. Um, our experience, you know, has always been that the relationship side of it is, is, I mean, you can't put a price tag on Mm -hmm. it. And so the relationships that you build and you're nurturing, um, you know, and friendships and the trust and all that from, from our context of with our students, with teams that come so with cch and the and the students that come and i mean they talk about that all the time through the rest of the year and Mm -hmm. and how someone encouraged them or how lance did this or that is emma and Mm -hmm. um but then also for us too like we've had interns and people from cch you know because they came down to Mm -hmm. wise and um you know and so that exposure to mission and and exposure to what God does in other parts of the world. I mean, there's, there's so many layers of yeah, value. It's just so multifaceted. Yes. And so we've always believed that, um, you know, because of the relationship side of, of, and that's life, you know, yeah. I mean, relationship is life and that, uh, we, we always want people to come. Yeah. And like, from our perspective, like us knocking on doors is not going to be effective. We're only there for a week. That's not going to be the best thing. You, however, are there for a considerable amount of time. Right. So anything that we're doing needs to direct individuals to you. Um, and whether that means like us doing yard work so you can go teach a class or do whatever Mm. or meet with people or something like that, that's beneficial. And then there's this other part of it for CCH's perspective is we're kind of not so secretly introducing students to missions with maybe the hope that they want to become a long-term missionary. Yes. Um, yes. So um, sometimes that <laughs> that's, that's often the stress that we can run into. Sometimes we're like, Oh, you're just going on a mission. And all I saw were photos of you hanging out on the beach, which mm. um, we try to tell the students like, well, one, we're not like, there will be fun, but our, that's not why we're here. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other thing is, uh, for some of the students to like, Hey, if you're going to take pictures, take pictures of the work that you're doing too. Right. Right. Um, because you don't want to just throw that on Facebook and then people are like, well, were you really effective for the kingdom? Right. Um, so yeah. that's another thing that, you know, we can run into problems with. Um, what, what advice would you give to somebody who wanted to get into like long-term missions? Um, well, wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a big decision. It, it is. It is a big decision. And to me, I've, I've always, I've always, I've, I've, I've narrowed it down to what I call the three C's. Okay. And the three C's are that, that you need to have in order to be able to be effective in missions is, is first you have to have a calling as I talked about earlier. And then you have to have a conviction about that calling and a conviction about the work that you're wanting to partner with. And then thirdly, you have to be committed. Um, there has to be a firm commitment that you have. And without any of those, uh, you're not going to last. And um, because it is not, it's not like a short-term trip. Mm-hmm. And that's a big misconception. Um, it is not, you know, in, a, in a short-term trip. It's like you know, high energy. It is high. Yeah, yeah, it's high energy. There, You know, you're on a... You're in a different place and different culture. It's all new and exciting. And ultimately in the back of my, yeah, back of your mind, you know that you're going to leave. Mm-hmm. And when you step off of a plane and there is no leaving mm-hmm. um, and you're not surrounded by your peers and everything else and, and you're in a different culture and, and setting, um, that can, that can, I mean, there, you can struggle with all kinds of things from insecurities to loneliness, depression, and, and, and not saying that that's, these are all things that we've experienced as well, but we've seen other people experience mm-hmm. and, and, and they're very real yeah. because, um, it's, it's, it's very different and, but it's a wonderful blessing. And, so, you know, enjoy it, um, you know, take each day, one day at a time, you I know. Remember, and I remember and, on one of the yeah. trips, you and your family joined us to go see some like sea turtles or something like that on our one fun day that we had. 
and uh i was standing next to you and our you know like the the wise students are you know swimming with our kids and they're looking at turtles and swimming over but uh just in the ocean and stuff like that and you're smiling your kids are having fun and we just kind of sarcastically joke to each other we we're like uh yeah because when you're on mission you're supposed to be miserable the whole time you're supposed to think about oh man i wish i was back in the united states <laughs> like no like people are living their lives like yeah, this is yeah. that that is your life like yeah. being on mission is just you know you're a pastor in another country trying yeah to help. Yep, exactly yeah. yeah so uh all that being said uh what has made being on mission mission worth it to you like what experience like events like what makes it worth it to you you know for for me it's it's about you know these students that we're teaching hearing their stories and seeing what they're doing um you know i can think of um you know a student named juice may who graduates you know this is years ago now but graduates goes back starts a ministry and uh gets married and he's a faithful father to to a couple kids and a great husband um or you know uh, Ribbinson, who starts several ministries, a prison ministry, a sports ministry, and with other wise graduates, starts and plants a church um, that is growing and thriving, and, and wise graduates are a part of that and spreading it and um, and digging new wells and and different parts to bring you know drinkable water to people. I mean, there's all kinds of things like that that for for us is is very rewarding seeing that fruit of of the years that you that you pour out your heart and your teaching and and just and living life you know um with with these students and and seeing them go back and make the impacts that they are is it it makes you get up in the morning you know cool 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 thanks for doing this yeah absolutely yeah, yeah you know it's uh <laughs> When you, when are all when are you all heading back? <laughs> uh, Saturday. Oh wow! Yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. the goal. Yeah, like we mentioned earlier, like this was recorded like right after the well, because <laughs> uh, Bryce is exceptionally busy, and you know like, we're, we're very thankful that we had this opportunity to have yeah, this conversation this a, and do all this. It's a blessing but, that this yeah. is a blessing. Yep. So, uh, how can individuals help out wives? Like prayer or get prayer or... prayer is a is the biggest thing obviously you know i mean all ministries and missions you know you know need and and you know the the support and all of that but for the the biggest thing that that we always care the most about is when people's when people come and go man we are praying i pray um you know three times a week you know, for, for wise and for your family, for the staff, for the students, you know, that stuff means a lot to us because that's what we can see happening, you know, and it's not just because you're working hard. It's, it's your effort and your commitment and, and what you're doing coupled with, coupled with what God is doing through, through the power of the spirit and through the answering of prayer. I mean, we see answered prayer all the time like that. So, um, it's, it, those are that's that's huge it wouldn't be as as meaningful or or successful uh, in the lives of these students if if people weren't praying i believe that yeah. all right uh and then if people wanted to get in contact of ways that you know they could help or get connected with wise bible college how would they do that well they can uh we're on facebook and and i th- Let's see, I don't do all the social media stuff, but uh, we have people who do, uh, <laughs> but like Twitter and, and Instagram. Yeah. And, you got a website too, don't you? And we have a website and all the different information's on it's there. And wisebiblecollege.org. Correct. Yeah, that's right. I may have seen a few videos pop up on there. No, that's right. <laughs> Click videos see. you made. <laughs> Somebody made them. I don't know. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you for doing this. Absolutely. Uh, that's thank all you we for got. having me. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Uh, That's all we got. Thanks, guys. Bye. (laughs) Thanks.